Uh, welcome to the Swedish Junior Hockey Podcast. Um, today's guest, uh, we're going to talk a lot about common denominators and mutual friends. And first day, first time that we've talked today. But Henry Akers uh, is proper. Is that the pr right pronunciation? Yes. I didn't know if it was the Henri Akres or something. Uh, oh, uh, Akres in, in, in Swedish. Is, and I'll tell you a little story about that <laughs> when yeah. we get going. Yeah. But welcome to the podcast. Uh, thank you very much, Stu. This episode is brought to you by Scandlux, your home for Scandinavian luxury products for the U.S. market. You can find us at Scandlux.com. So uh, you and I are, are it's it's a little bit serendipitous. Uh, I should look up, I think it's episode three. Uh, we had Ian Gately on the podcast and we were talking about how he sent out all these emails and wanted to get to play in Sweden. And it was only one guy who took his call. And I think you were him. Yes. Yes. Is, uh, no, is, is Ian, uh, Exactly. I, re I remember that at that time. Uh, so I was in Buden in the north of, of Sweden. And I believe we just promoted back to Hockey Etten from D Division 2, the senior team. And so there was a huge push to start a, a, a J20 team again, as, as there hadn't been a J20 team for a year. And, um, and so uh, we didn't have players. And that's all tied back to when Budens went uh, bankrupt about 20 years earlier. You know? ah. So there was that, that group of, of kids where there was a little bit of a, of a break there. And so we didn't have own players to, to, uh, to come. And, and so is, is the funny thing about that is, is it was easier to get kids to come from America, Slovakia, Russia, wherever it was that we brought in this mishmash of United Nations. And um, then to come from Lulio, which is only, you know, a 20 minute drive. So, um, so, so Ian was part of that crew that uh that that came in and it was a really interesting and fun year to uh to work with that group yeah and he told me about some of those things and then he ended up in fall shipping and the reason why i got him on the on the podcast was because one of my good friends jesper linder is in fall shipping i coached his kid and he lived here in the u.s and when we started this he said yeah you ought to have ian on here's his contact info had ian on and now, and then, you know, then I think that we've had some other mutual friends, uh, Danny Treisler, who is from here. Um, and then uh, Jens, I think, you know him. And then Urban Ulmark, you've met him. So, uh, and then I think Ted Soikonen, you know Ted? Yep, I know Ted. Yep, very well. So, Great so guy. it's weird. We must be all watching the same YouTube clips belong to the same LinkedIn groups and, uh, and, um, and, um, um, so anyway, it's, it's, it's serendipitous and, um, and good, but here's the thing. So I'm, I'm, uh, a little bit. So when I'm looking you up, uh, play driver hockey Inc, uh, is a company that you own, you're an assistant coach at, I guess, prep school in British Columbia. Yes. yes. And long, interesting background as a player in um, in British Columbia juniors and then European uh, pro levels at minor pro levels and and then been coaching for a bunch of years. <laughs> um, but but here's the thing that I'm I want to really hone in on, and that is. Um, not so much the common, we could talk stories on the on the different people, but I'm sure we'll interweave it a little bit. You're an author on the coach's site that I've saw some articles in there. Um, you are, you've been in, in Hockey Canada coaching and Swedish Hockey Federation coaching clinics through your career. And it's interesting, I think, to compare. Uh, we just released Monday the second time I had Urban Ulmark on there and the title was what's wrong with Swedish junior Swedish juniors. Um, and, um, so, um, you know, 
it's interesting, you know, we just are at the heels of the junior worlds, Canada. I mean, how impressive was, was that in Sweden? Pretty good, but still not, not the same level. I just think that when we watch Sweden versus Canada, it is a remarkable difference in, in all levels. Compete, talent, speed, physicality, coaching, and execution. Um, so I'm interested in your, because you've read a little bit, you've, you've been probably more late, more in Sweden and Europe than you have in Canada, but your opinions on that. So let's start there. Well, you know, is, is if we just zero in on the under 20 tournament, is if you look at the that Canadian team, of course they have you know one of these really exceptional players in Connor Bedard. Right? He's okay. So, he's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, no, is is he's going to be an excellent professional player next year at the NHL level, right? Yeah. So so you know, and Sweden's top players, they're playing in the American League. You know, so the, there are good players there. And of course, I'm out in on the West Coast. So um, uh, Ledemaki, who's in your gardens, you know, is, is there was look for him. And uh, but of course, I understand he's, he had mono and he's had some injuries and some different things. Right. So uh, so is is but th that's the big difference really is, you know, is, is those top end really and I call them outside the box game breaker players were were they necessarily on this you know, version of the Swedish team. And and that's what I see as really the big difference uh, between the, the, the two nations. Yeah. And, but it's also been a trend, right? It's not just this year. You know, Sweden is, it's, they're really good, but they're not great. And then I've had some guys on from the Swedish, you know, federation and they're in their, they're they struggle with it they want to come they want to compete for the gold and what do we have to do to now go over that limit and and they're really focusing on the compete factor yes right now that's the initiative from the swedish hockey federation and um and then i also had um had a conversation about the difference now us versus sweden about the ntdp and like i was having the conversation with mike bloom and um and uh jeff colson and and we were talking about well sweden has 23 ntdps meaning niu uh gymnasiums right yeah and that ought to be so much better than us who has basically one but you know, so I don't know what when I say that statement, what do you think? Well, is is right. Sweden is all about the breadth, right, and and creating that large player base to to come from. And and um, it was Canada has the same, and you know, but is you have a different. There's no place in the world for hockey like it is in Canada. You know, is 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 I've uh, talking about Urban Omar because I had the opportunity to spend some time with him when he was working with Modo, and I would say that my time in Orange Slesvik was the closest that it felt like hockey in Canada. Is well, there's you, that you, you, you never been I've, to Lexan? I've been to Lexan. <laughs> I've been to Le Lexan, but it's sort of, that's been in and out trips. I haven't spent enough time there. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, so I had so to get but, the Lexon moment. No, I, 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 know. <laughs> I know. And, and, uh, so is, uh, is I really enjoy, you know, it's a fantastic atmosphere in, in the East Hall in there when you go to the, the senior games, um, in, in Lexon. But, uh, but is, is it, you just, it felt ingrained in your, you live, breathe, sleep. It's part of the culture in, yeah. in Orange Week. And I'm sure Lexon has a similar well, sort of feel. So, so I know, so you've spent, I'm, I'm, it's really interesting too, because for some reason you must like it up North in Sweden. Because when, <laughs> right. we, when we look at where you've been in Aspleven, and, and then all of a sudden I see also Narvik, uh, which is, I think where you and Danny Tre Treisler are, were at the same place. Is what we, we uh, Danny and I met before then. So, so Danny and I actually met in Budapest. 
is where we met. Is is he came and he tried out and um and and so we connected there and and he 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 didn't stay with the with the team in in Buden and and we stayed in contact over the years. But, but know, I think he that. was in Norvik, if I'm not mistaken. Is, well, yeah, he he uh through that is is I. I think introduced him to some people there as I was moving away from that uh, gig. So, um, so is, is, is that was good. And that was definitely something that Narvi needs um, to, because we were in the top league in Norway at that time. And um, it's a, it's not a place where there is uh, the minor hockey there. I think, including the A team, there was about a hundred players in the entire association, right? Yeah, so yeah. the the development of of homegrown players is going to take some time. So yeah. you're always going to need to recruit. And so and so developing a scouting network and and really looking at Norwegian players that would have the interest to to take in the opportunity to move north and play in the top league was was something that um the club was was looking for as an initiative. And that's where Danny came in. So, so, but go back to kind of, yeah, you like it up yeah. north where it's so, dark and, and, you know, <laughs> there, there, yeah. there, there, there is this term, if we translate it into to, to English, it's called Lapland or sickness. Uh, if you want to explain that. Lapkuka. <laughs> well, is uh, really what it, what it came down to is my second day in, in Haparanda, which is a tiny community. Uh, I, I paid my own flight to come there. So I needed to get reimbursed for my flight. And to do that, I needed a bank account. And so I went into the bank and there was a, and court blonde, uh, Jay are there, uh, you know, a short blonde woman and we connected and she's now my wife. So, so it, it, that's, you know, why I really worked to find opportunities in the North. Oh, okay. Well, that explains all of it then. <laughs> um, well, and Laplander sickness is basically low serotonin levels because there's no sun in in the in the winter time. Um, so people can get really depressed. Yeah, uh, and and but, you know, is is it's a huge difference. Like if you want to talk about, I uh, we reside in Lulio, or my family is is in Lulio now, which is a little bigger center, about you know, hundred thousand people or thereabouts. Yeah. Um, and the difference from Lulio to Narvik is was amazing. Yeah. In, in how much darker it is. So the sun goes down the end of November in Narvik and because of the mountains, you it doesn't rise above until the middle of February. That's crazy. So <laughs> a very I... unique place, absolutely spectacularly beautiful. One yeah. of the most beautiful places in the world. Well, and and it's N A R V I K if you were Norway and if you just Google map it, you'll see that it's pretty it, you understand what I'm talking about. But so here's the thing that I go back to Modo. Uh, what I think is the the perfect kind of storm in that type of community uh, is that is different than let's say Lexan or let's say Hove or Rögle or Malmö or Frölunda. These bigger places is most of these people are coming from kind of common family histories and 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 hardworking towns it's almost like in the u.s when they were talking about you know people growing up in the in the midwest in the in the in, in the farm communities in the midwest and they have really work good hard work ethics and you know they call them um you know um or mining towns or brooks and 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 these type of towns so the work ethic and the and the team environment uh, you, you know, and and I and you put all those guys together, and you take the best of the best, and where they're going to go at that particular time was that was the premier place because I think they were the second NIU program in the nation. It was HV seventy one and Moto were the two first ones in the in Sweden that were the hockey high school academies that pulled from the entire all of these small little towns. And they come together and they had gotten genetics. They had gotten, uh, you know, compete. And then they, they were all the same. But when you put them all together, there were harmony within that orchestra. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the further south you go, it's a little bit more hodgepodge. People are coming from different places. 
And although they have the same structure, I don't think that they have the same harmony. I don't think they have the same values, the same backgrounds. So when you pull those together, the music they create and the compete level uh, is was probably at another level. Yeah, no, uh, that's 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 very interesting because I think about you know like is the heyday of Modo was that uh, sort of seventies group with Forsberg and Nasland and then the Sedins came into that and then um, Victor Hedman, you know, Victor Hedman, you know, sort of the maybe that's the tail end of that. But when when you hear uh, interviews and I believe there's a Swedish documentary about um, about Modo that maybe SVTV did, um, and and it and that's exactly what they're talking about is when we showed up at the rink with Forsberg and that group is you know is they were com- it was it was all about compete, right? So is maybe circling back to that is is where Swedish hockey is today. Well, and I just to put things in a little bit of perspective too. I mean, we talk about Connor Bedard, right? He's not the most he didn't he still didn't break the scoring record in the junior worlds. No. <laughs> Who has it? Uh, of Fulpa. Yes, yeah. of course. Uh so you know um it, I, I don't know. It's just amazing. Of course, Connor Bedard still got another year, right? Yeah, he, he's not playing next year though. No, I don't think he's I don't think he's coming <laughs> back. Is uh, you know the 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 Canucks or whoever gets him, <laughs> he'll be there. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna be they're gonna what we're gonna see is they're gonna burn a lot of boats between now and April. Yeah, and that's an interesting scenario. So it's interesting because the 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 other coach that I work with at Shawnigan Lake School here on Vancouver Island is he has a son who's the same. Um, uh, birth year as as Connor Bedard, so they've grown up and played played against, and they went to the Brick uh, tournament in Edmonton and and various different events, and so you know, and and Connor Bedard has been, you know, that sort of driven player, and and really is is this is how I and as an outsider looking in is is I see that he's really in competition against himself to get better, and that is really where you see that 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 drive to become those really top you know that the creme de la creme well and i so with that kind of a racehorse the team that he has been able to and i think that conor mcdavid is another one the team from such an early on where they can really put all the pieces behind behind that kind of it's a it's a it's a top fuel person uh, not everybody's going to be able to to handle that kind of things. But I think that the Swedish model, here's the thing that I've realized from, and I, and I like to get your opinion because you worked in hockey gymnasiums and you've coached and you've played and you've played juniors in, in Canada too. But, you know, I'm a little bit surprised. You know, when I look at Swedish juniors, got a son that plays there now, but what I've seen is there's a big difference between the top level clubs that has the NIU programs. And then the second tier, they may be playing in the same division. So J 18s that are playing in J 18 elite or now it's called region. There's a big difference between the, the, the top club Örebro, and the second tier clubs like Borling and Fallen drums on the, on in one area or you know that that has liu programs right the local academies versus the big time academies they're not even they're playing in the same division but they're not playing in the same league no and 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 the level of coaching and the level of sophistication and systems and 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 infrastructure they're surrounded by is pro level versus amateur level and they're competing in the same division but then, the, then there's another level below that. That may be Division One. So you have J18 region that has really two levels of organization within it, and then you have another level which is Division One that is a little bit more like, you know, I don't know, Double A. It's not Triple A hockey kind of thing. Yeah. And, and the organizations are kind of run that way too. You know. Uh, and and that's just the way it is. But here's my my even at the highest level, 
Uh, they have nice facilities. They have good coaching. But they don't have – they, they kind of allow them – it's more of a group coaching than a and a tailored plan for each individual with a with a skills coach for an individual that does their own thing, uh, you know, with a with a diet dietary coach and a mental coach, all these things that you see with the Connor Bedards, they have, you know, the equivalent of the Formula One team around them, and Sweden has a little bit. Their model is not it's actually frowned upon mm -hmm. you know the moment that you go and you play in this select tournament oh ah, wait a minute yeah yeah you, you, you're too good for us you know? yes yes well, well is, is you know is is what color are all the houses in in uh Lexand, in La darla fall fall red yes red. exactly right so and so you know the, what's the what's the expression logom yes not too hot <laughs> not too cold precise and, you, know, and, so. and you don't want to stick out too much because you, you're 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 looked upon as uh the, the the and and i think that is since since you're the outsider now being the insider isn't it looked upon a little bit bad to be too good i i think you know swedish society is changing right so so there is that opportunity now that maybe wasn't there 30 40 years ago and it's and it's it's not looked in that way as you know as is i see swedish society becoming a little bit more american right so so you know is that that individual aspect you see more and you definitely see that in stockholm area and and the bigger centers is is there is more skills coaches and outside things outside of the club in the north that isn't necessarily the case right is is everything is directed by the club and and so there are outliers of course but uh for the vast majority of kids i think what you're talking about is is more true but in bigger centers is there is more of this ability to build um a personal program outside of the club but on the other hand you could you could still argue and say well which one is the better model and and I don't think there there is an answer for that. I think it's a I very you know it's it's an individual thing, and it depends on the community and how the um, mentality of of the society is in that way. And like you say, it's there's a difference, definite difference between the north and the south. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so here's where I wanna I wanna go next, and I'm and and it's a little bit of of the conversation I've had with Urban Umark about. You know, what is the right place and what's the right path? Because I think that's really, really interesting is, is um, you know, maybe it's not best for this player to go and 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 go straight into the SHL. Uh, maybe it's not the best place for this person to go to that NIU program where he may be, you know, is it better for my kid to go play and get more ice time, more to be the guy at a lesser program versus being, you know, the teeter guy that may be healthy scratch on some, some games. Yes. So, um, you know, you're, I'm coming from yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Is, 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 and it's the same thing as it, is it comes down to the individual, you know, is, uh, I was just listening to a, a pod with a player that I, I coached and uh, a guy named Per Ladin. Yeah. And, and so that was with uh, that was Leo Girard's uh, yes podcast. yeah with the, the got my team podcast and 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 so you know is is Leda is an interesting guy he could talk hockey all day I and, was so you know, impressed oh. he, and he's a driven driven human you know is is even at at forty years old he's trying to improve his stride you know is is he he wants to he he wants to win you know to be the best that he can uh personally but his story is right it's interesting is he went over to the US played in the coast then he got his opportunity in in the SHL back with Lulio and and then he became you know a sort of a, a star in 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 Sweden and then got his shot in the NHL at 30 and nobody and knew him and he was like and, and, I'm a yeah. star in Sweden yeah and yeah, they're like yeah. who are you so, so you know, is 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 it such a unique 
path for each of us. And, you know, is coming back to the, the interesting thing in Sweden is if they, if kids at 15, they don't get into the, um, the Neo uh, gymnasium, right. It's like, well, my hockey career is over. Where they didn't make the TV puck tournament. Exactly. And, which which and, is kind of like the same time, right? You didn't make the TV puck, so therefore you're not going to get into NIU. And, and everybody that makes TV puck, there isn't enough places in NIU. Yeah. So, you know, like it's it's math, right? And and uh, and and so anyway, is is there's, there's the path is very unique for you. And so I agree is is I, I'm of the belief is be a star as long as you can, because that day is going to end for, you know, 99% of the guys, right? Isn't is is you're not going to be Connor Bedard at the next level. You're not going to be Connor McDavid. There's something with the name Connor, but um, yeah. you know, so so is is be that star. Um, but that's where the multi-sport part comes in, right? Is so is is you might be the star in hockey, but if you play football, you might not be the star in football. So you learn how to be a good teammate. Yeah. Right. So the, the there's it's I think it's a there is no direct path so part of what play driver hockey is, is is i work with individual players as a bit of a mentor and we would do do video and we do on ice stuff and, and various things but it's building a path for you that fits you and and so i as i think that's exactly where coaches uh are today and that's what's actually what's best for the player and what's needed for the player and you know, from from my background, is I didn't come from a hockey background. Is my my dad was an artist, my mom is a, was an English teacher. So you know, is is they wanted me to play violin, and you know, is is become all these other things. Uh, so I started hockey and violin at the same time. You know, you can see which one won out. But um, <laughs> you know, so so it, it's it's and I, but I had no, um, I had my coach from minor hockey that was a big influence on me, but I didn't have a mentor or, you know, somebody to lean on. We didn't have those things at that time is I think I was 25, 26 before I ever saw myself on video, you know? So, so it was just a different time to go through it. So I learned by uh, trial by fire, which is a little bit what, you know, how Ian was, was talking about his journey as well. So, so, all right. So tell me what you do then with, as, as a player development you know that that word is so um overused some some somehow right you know so what do you, what what is your what is your goal in terms of adv advising the these because you work with 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 junior players college players and 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 pro hockey players is is it more as a so or do you classify yourself as a family advisor no not not in not in any way is, okay uh, <laughs> is is because uh, you would, know there's I, a stigma about that that there's yeah. family advisors that are more they are they are there to connect they're more like a uh a, 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 what do you call it a, a staffing agency you know i'm here to find you a job i'm a recruiter from a standpoint of okay you have a resume i have a job let me put the two of you together and then i collect my little fee and but they but they classify themselves as player development right or and then there's skills coaches that are you know they strap parachutes on people and they do fancy they do fancy youtube videos of edge work and you know all that kind of stuff and it's really and they're more they're really great marketers versus really improving someone's skill that actually translates to the to the game so so I want to let you define what who you are. So part of my you know philosophy as a human is right is is I want to create and share joy, and so really at the crux of things that's what it is. And why do we play hockey, right? Is to have fun. And so the the more higher end my skill set is, and that might be mental, physical, technique, you know, understanding the game, IQ, all of those things. The more improved I am in that way, what's it going to create is the ability for me to have more fun, which will then lead to the success in whatever that your version of success is defined as, right? Yep. 
So, so, it, but it comes down to the, the seeing the individual, and 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 you know, as as you talked about player development, it's really it's human development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, is is you were talking about farming communities and mining communities, and of course, um, you know, as Kirna is not so far from from Lulio, it's a big mining mining community. But I grew up in Ontario, in Canada, and I grew up in a farming community. So I didn't live on a farm, but all of my friends and and peers. Uh, not all, but you know, the vast majority grew up on farms, and so I learned very, um, very young. You know, as I ride my bike ten kilometers to get there, great training, and uh, go and visit my friends, and we have to do the chores before we can play, right? So you you learn to put in the work before you you get to have ah, the fun, right? Yeah, yeah. So 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 I consider myself, a, you know, a, a people farmer, as I'm farming humans. Yeah, it's that's a great analogy. I mean, it, for you. You may know that I grew up on a dairy farm and outside of Lexund, I'll send you a picture that my brother, <clears throat> my brother sent me today that epitomizes. I I, I almost want to frame this in because it's it's a picture of my dad standing in the opening. I'm looking at it right now. I'll send it to you. Standing in the opening of his of his uh he's sending a few head of cattle away to the to the to the market. And my brother's a pretty good photographer, but he's he's taking this picture and and the light shines on him and he stands there like a king in his rubber boots and his overalls or surrounded by by the cows. But it's he's the king of his domain. And and I love it. You know, I love it because I I, you know, that's who part of who I am. Um that um um that I love. So, um, so I don't know, side, side track. Beautiful, there. Like, beautiful, I'm, beautiful I'm, Jacob. I'm, I'm looking at this picture. That's why I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I couldn't, couldn't help but think about that as, as we were talking, but <clears throat> so now you're back and forth between BC and Sweden. Yes. Cause you're in yes. British Columbia now. Yes. Yes, as I, I just returned from uh, from a break, and and that's one of the beautiful things about the the place where I'm I'm at 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 Shawnigan is uh, is they allow me a lot of freedom. Um, you know, it's not uh, a typical uh, scenario to have your wife and kids on one side of the world and and you're on on the other. And and I, I came back mainly because of family interest. Is uh, is my mother is is getting on, and she's such a huge part of my life that it's time I've been away for 20 years uh, across the world. Right. So it's, it's time to give back a little bit to that. And, and I'm, you know, I'm very blessed in that I have a wife who accepts the, this and, and kids that on that understand. And I was just talking, speaking with them. It was, uh, you know, Nike Fika time uh, yeah. just before we were on and, uh, and, you know, they're like, dad, dad, we miss you. But, uh, but, you know, as I'll be back in a, in a, in a couple, you know, six weeks or so and, and be able to see them again. So, yeah. Um, well, that's that's awesome. Um, and 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 are you focusing most of your time now as as kind of that advisor, or are you still coaching, or what is the well? Is 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 I so I work with a U seventeen team, and this is the the youngest age group that I've worked with full, you know, as a as a full time as I'd worked with U eighteen, U R on Jay Shugo, and um, the majority, and and really enjoy helping players the best experience i had was actually in 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 calyx with a with the j arton team there that we we promoted to the top league after christmas we went undefeated in the first half of the year and it was but it was one of those situations where i didn't know any of the kids i knew like three of them before the season started and we played our first game against uh pitio and pitio was in was in the the elite j arton elite and it was a training match and Halfway through the game, I said to the backup goalie, who was five foot three, um, you're going in. And he it was one of the few, first times that a player looked at me like I had three heads. And uh, and he went in and he did excellent. And so it was just, you know, that convergence of you as a coach and you as a human where you are at that time, meeting a group of players who were ready for what you could offer at that time. And, and so, you know, as we struggled at the, at the start of the year, we still won, but as you know, there was opportunities at that time that it was a 98 um, group was the, was the, the, the hot 17 year olds. And 
we had some uh, null nulls, I believe it was, that were, you know, sort of the underage. And, and I remember some of the feet, you know, as noise around the team from parents is, why are you playing these these null nulls? And when we came to the the qual series against Cram Fours, um, the, Cram Fours, the, their goal differential was probably like 240 or something. Like they did, they were creaming everybody. And so they thought they were going to wipe the floor with us. And uh, and so the first game in, we hosted the first game in Callops, and uh, the old the null nulls scored two of the three goals, I think it was. Hmm. You know, and so that development of giving them opportunities to succeed throughout that that uh, fall paid off when we needed it the most. And and so it was it was really fun. That's one of the greatest experiences in in hockey. And then you talk about you know sort of the that gap between the the haves and the have nots, if you will, at 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 the level. And um and so as when we got into elite in the second half of the season, of course Tim Rowe and Modo and all those teams were playing the 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 entire national series at that time. So we were playing sort of like clubs, but of course uh, Bjork Loven and some of the bigger, still bigger. Uh, clubs were in that series it was a huge learning curve for for our group you know um, to go through that so I'm gonna throw out a word and I want to wrap it up here because and, and we probably gonna have to talk again I know it uh, relationships um, huge for me mm-hmm. and something that I I think is 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 um, people try to get um um, people try to get to things a little too quick, and 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 so many levels. But but when I say relationships, what comes to um, um, what what comes to to your 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 mind? Well, is is as I think about the and a different word, trust. Right? Is so the 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 speed of our ability to um, because hockey, it's not just an athletic competition; it's a learning competition. And it doesn't matter what I know that can help you. If you don't trust me, and the the bridge to that is the relationship. If if you don't trust and and respect is another word, you know, is, is if we don't have that common ground, then it doesn't matter. You know, is is I could be the smartest guy in the world, and we're not going to get anywhere, right? Yeah. And so so is 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 relationships are all about that the speed of the trust and and how quickly we can establish that. And of course, it's I have to. Um, you know, just another philosophic thing that, uh, that I have is, is, is I respect you for who you are. I acknowledge who you are. How can we make each other better? Yeah. Right. And if we're taking care of those two things, you know, is everything else kind of takes care of itself. Yeah. Now I think it's a, I, I have found, and, and I look back at my, my, it, 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 in my coaching career, which was youth hockey here at a lower level tier two um, and not, but it's still, it doesn't matter which level it's about. Um, it's about building the relationship and the ability, the willingness. And I look back and I said, I probably wasn't, I didn't, I, I wasn't willing to open myself up and I wasn't willing to seek out the relationship. And and I think that it's it takes a certain kind of person to not everybody wants to have relationships. Have you thought about that? I mean, it's yeah. it's yeah. it's pretty common. I think that they're like my job is to do this, and um, you have to be a good listener. You have to have empathy. You have to, you know, you have to be willing to do that. And the unfortunate thing is that I think a lot of Un- unfortunately in the swedish system very few places allow you to have the time and resources to be able to spend with the kids the players to be able and 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 when when i've listened to guess who is who i found has the strongest relationships when i've talked to the different teams it's a strength and conditioning guy uh, or the yeah uh, the the that or the rehab guy yeah yeah material right? yeah that and why is that well they spend time when shoulders are relaxed uh we're here we're working a program and there there's no pressures there's no there's no pretend 
and they're just being themselves and we have a common goal and I'm here, I am here as a resource to you and I'm going to push you and, and we're going to do this together. And they develop these relationships, uh, which I think is there's a lesson for coaches to learn there that if you're willing to be vulnerable, if you're willing to open up and you're interested in in letting people in and also challenge people to to I need to develop these relationships. And then there's systems and ways to to go about doing that to 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 earn that trust. But then they'll go to war for you. Yes. And yes, I yes, think yes. that if if we s- close this loop, go back to northern northern Sweden in a place like Mudo, those guys they were so bought in. And you know, it was Peter Forsberg's dad who was a coach. Did you think that there was a trust there? Oh, it was, there was, he was probably just one of the guys that was, he didn't have that coaching. That group must've been easy um, in some ways. Um, so yeah, it's, it's such a cool, um, such a cool uh, concept uh, that I don't know. I wonder how many of those slides are coming up on the, on the, Hockey Canada and hockey Swedish Hockey Federation um, symposiums. Well, it's 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 interesting because I, I've I've taken uh, before I was even a coach as a, as I was still playing. I took my my HP one in Canada, which is the sort of the the entry level for the elite stream, if you will. And and I don't like that word, <laughs> so yeah. I'm happy that Sweden has changed. But anyway, um, in in that way, and, and then I've and then I have my ETU from uh, from Sweden, and and so very different. Of course, there was about six or seven years gap in between, but the Swedish education was so much more about learning who you are in order to be a better leader. And it was very little, it was, you know, as directed by the Federation, very little about tactics or systems or anything. You know, that was the coaches in their own discussions would talk the hockey part. Um, but it was more about discovering yourself so that you can better understand the players that you're working with. Um, and, and and I'll say this is the interesting, what my big memory from from the Hockey Canada one is, is I remember one coach uh, a guy named Don McKee, who works with the Canadian Blind um, Hockey, I believe he's 70 odd years old, um, is he posed the question to the group and it was a lot of Western Hockey League. I think it was the first time there was women taking part in this. And and he said, uh, he asked, do you think there'll be a day when fighting is not part of the game? And in that group, I, w- I had my hand raised and I said, I already see it. <laughs> in Sweden, it doesn't exist. Yeah. Right? And, and, and so, you know, is, is uh, so many of the other coaches, that was a, a mind blowing thing. And where are we now? Is hockey really part of the game? No, is you have four lines that can play, right? Is, is it, the game is so fast and, and so good when I'm watching the NHL now, it's, it's just, it's amazing how <laughs> great these guys are. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched... was a decent hockey player. I was, I wasn't on, never on that level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Well, Henry, it's been a joy. Uh, It's been fun to just kind of chat about hockey in general and common connections. We, we didn't even go into some of them. Uh, um, Glad to have you part of, of the Swedish hockey uh, podcast. And, you know, you know what happens when you're part of this, right? It's just like the spit and chiclets bump. Um, People to come on here uh their career just takes off after this uh and uh i had uh scott apogan on here a few weeks later he gets a deal with the blackhawks you know take total credits with that <laughs> and uh and and uh so i haven't heard anybody calls me and says yeah that was a big mistake coming on jacob's podcast and and uh and my 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 career took a big turn to the negative afterwards. So it must be something good. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Jacob. Well, thank you very be, much. Be, before I let you go, if Paul, somebody wants to contact you and play Driver Hockey Inc., uh, want to put a yeah. plug in for you. And I know you're you're. That's not why you came on, but I do think that it's a what, what you're what you're putting people 
what you are putting down, people ought to pick up, so to speak. Um, and 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 for the right person, maybe yes. you can help that person, whether they are a junior player, a college player, minor pro, or or higher pro. Um, what's the best way to reach you? Well, is uh, yeah, just how we connected, sort of through LinkedIn uh, right now. Is is um, you know, as I'm not a social media guy, is uh, you know, is that's not what I do. I I spend the majority of my time looking at video for for players and and then and then connecting because as you see, it takes time to actually talk to the person and and figure stuff out, and that's what I really enjoy doing is uh, is spending time with with good people. Yeah. Well, again, uh, been a pleasure and um, and we'll we'll stay connected for sure. Thank you, Jacob.